Hey YouTube believers, Chris Matt coming at you today with X Factor issue 88. And I loved this book. Diving back in, getting the humor of Peter David while also seeing some amazing artwork. Mmm, this is exactly what a collector wants in a comic book. I mean, look at this cover. Speaking of which, this is in fact the first appearance of Random. And I just love how he is just featured on the page, blowing things up, and has Guido down for the count. And even on the cover says, Random Violence. Now, following up on that as we dive into this, the print date on this book was March 1993, and we just get a full close-up like he's in your face, not this gentleman's face, the reader's face. And it's just kind of like, hey, I'm talking to you. <laughs> now, before we dive into everything, I just want to open this up and it says, let's get one thing straight. The mayor may have panicked and called you because he saw your ads, Mr. Mutant Hunter. But that don't mean I'm clapping my hands for joy. What we got here is a situation. I'm not looking to see any random violence. So again, I love that they use the title of the book in there, and it kind of reminds me of that Peter Griffin thing where he's watching all those movies and the person says the title of the movie, and he's like, he said it! <laughs> he said it! And again, look at this. We have random up in our face, and we have to actually read this ad backwards. It says, got a mutant problem? Call the expert. <laughs> but still, nonetheless, just the attitude. And here we get his name. You follow me, random? Like a trail of manure. Oh, such great stuff. This is the type of visual storytelling and reading that comic collectors want. This is how you get drawn in. Now, speaking of which, who made this book? Stanley presents action with an attitude from Peter David Ryder, Joe Casada, penciler, Al Milgram, inker, Arrain, colorist, Richard Starkings, letterer, Kelly Converse, editor, Bob Harris, group editor, and Tom DeFalco. Editor-in-chief. So we got a pretty big all-star cast on this book back in 94. Now what happens is Random's kind of piggybacking off what Scott and the original five were doing with the X-Factor being mutant exterminators, except with Random, he's actually exterminating them. Now to talk about that, there is one particular page. I think it's here. Yeah. So the police says, there, you're... Blah, blah, blah. I promise I can talk, just not enough coffee. They're your own kind, Random. Why should we trust you? <laughs> you arrest normal humans. Noids, I call them. Your own kind. Why trust you? Sides takes a thief to catch a thief. And it takes a mutant to catch a mutant. Don't it? That's kind of poignant. You're just like, Pruh! great stuff that slaps you in the face and gives you a little bit of taste of reality there. Just great writing right there. Now again, the X Factor, they've been called in too. And what I like is Val. Again, was kind of seeing that Val sort of changed at this point. And you know, Rain says, Does Val seem a bit odd to you lately, Guido? Sure, kid. Maybe she's been replaced by an able duplicate, huh? And just kind of like that foreshadowing, just all that deep, dark shadowing here in the face. Just great stuff because it makes you wonder. Because you got to remember, Peter David's a bit of a troll in a fun way. So now is he really saying that Val's been, you know, uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Or is he just screwing with us? Because he loves to do that. And that's why I always love his utilization of Jamie Madrox because... Jamie is just like that personification of, I'm going to troll you and it's going to be fun. Now, what I love is th there's different characters like this guy. They're called the, uh, what did I just call them, the expatriates or something like that. They're trying, what's happening is one of their friends is hurt and they're just wanting to get hospital care. But they're having to kind of escalate into almost a terrorist situation to get him care. And that's why there's police, x factors being called in. And then Mayor panics and calls random. So we got all these different cacophony things just happening all at once. This character, 
what he's able to do is sort of like what uh, <coughs> Danny can do, where she can go into your mind and pull out your worst nightmares to a sense. And this guy says, it's not possible. I'm not reading your mind. I, I can't draw images to shape shift into. Now where Danny can make uh, like tangible visions, this guy shifts into them. And Random goes, think you can read this hot shot. And I just love how he's brought in as a first appearance. It's not no one going, ha ha, oh my God, LOL, so random, we're having coffee, and oh my God, you're such a bitch, and I know you're just a bitch. I mean, some of the reading that I do for modern X-Men, and I'm like, I feel like I'm reading Lifetime. No offense, but I'm just, that's not how comics work, you know, for a visual medium. Here, this, um, Oh, I cannot remember her name off the top of my head. But anyway, what she can do is she can cause, like, whirlwind, essentially. She goes, don't worry, I can handle them. You think so, Wendy? Well, looky here. I'm generating a whirlwind that goes in the opposite direction of yours. And that's why his power is he can counter, in his namesake, is he can counter any power at random of whoever's going to go at him. Polaris, these people, Havoc. Etc. And then the same thing with the guy that he, uh, what he's able to do is take like metal and rust it. <coughs> he's like, we're not leaving till uh, Taylor is out of danger. You're going to have more danger than you know what to do with. And you can forget your rusting trick. This weapon ain't metal. It's all me. And the way he just knocks this dude out. Awesome work and look at the dynamic artwork there's no flat panels it doesn't look like 3d sketching this is all old school the marvel way artwork great stuff all around and look because he could rapidly regenerate guido goes to punch him blew it big time i was going to give you a chance to back off quietly now the x factor is here but instead i'll you know, Guido's just ready to go in, punch, boom, done. <laughs> and he's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's great stuff. In, again, in Peter David style. <laughs> the way this de-escalates, he's just kind of like, wah, wah. but in terms of the storytelling and the type of person that Random is and how Havoc's able to get him off of these people, it's great for how the story's told. Yeah, you may think, God, I wish there was like a big fight, but Alex makes it clear why that's stupid. And again, after all that, we get a little bit of a cool down. Raiden's asking Jamie if he's okay because uh, Random does a little number on him, which you guys are going to have to read the book. But look at this. Um, remember how in the early parts of David's run, how she was all over a habit, now she's like, I wouldn't want to see you hurt. You are the closest to my age on the team after all, Jamie. And I care about you, you know? <laughs> Whoa! <clears throat> um, she's like, Jamie, you banged your head. What startled you? Uh, uh, nothing, just got to uh, hit the little multiple ends room. And here, now, uh, for those of you that haven't read The Extinction Agenda or have read bits and pieces, Rain got tampered with. Um, Genosha initially, before it was a free nation, was very much just a nasty dictatorship place. Um, everyone thought it was like the greatest nation because it flourished, blah, 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 blah. But what you find out <coughs> is that mutants are taken and basically their whole identity is stripped away to where they're just um, a mindless drill and uh, they use their powers for you know generating electricity cleaning the city so servitude rain and the new mutants are captured she's tampered with and so jamie here they're they're uh, meeting the expatriates because they were kind of working in tandem back at genosha to get their friend the care he needs she goes let's face it i know from personal experience that rain can get a bit Frisky. Whatever's going on here, it's been happening ever since her mind and body were mucked with as a mutate. And that's what they called the mutants that were in servitude. They called them mutates. 
maybe we'll find the answers once we get to Genosha. So I like here that we're finally kind of starting to, to revisit a lot of what happened during the Extinction Agenda, because this is where this book took place, was in the fallout of the Extinction Agenda and why uh, Xavier and Scott handed over X-Factor to Val and Havoc. So kind of coming full circle in this issue, I'm excited to see what's going to happen. We get some more, what do you call it, um, stakes that are going to be happening the next issue. And then we get a back a follow-up story because in the beginning, Val's talking about how she gave Quicksilver some time off. So it sort of kind of fills in the blanks where you're wondering if David's really trolling you or something's really going on. This is Peter David writing. This is penciled by uh, <coughs> Chris Batista, inked by Andrew Polo Pepoy, I think so you say it. It's lettered by Luis uh, Bujalas. If I'm butchering the names, I'm sorry. And then I love how this says, over-edited by Bob Harris and overlooked by Tom DeFalco. Now, at this point in Marvel's history, and look at this artwork, my God. For a follow-up story, very great work. Awesome. Angles, again, the Marvel way. Now, what's happening is Quicksilver at this point, as I was just talking about, is he's married to Crystal of the Inhumans. But they've kind of separated when this story starts. And Pietro's actually coming in saying, Val, I need some time off. I've been talking to Crystal. We're trying to work things out. And I want to take some time off to where her and I can actually talk face to face and see if we can salvage our marriage. <laughs> and you just, you're thinking, wow, okay. He's like, she's bro broaching the possibility of reconciliation. And Val says, we're on alert right now, Pietro. As soon as the expatriates turn up, well, there always will be something, won't there? Always some excuse. Never mind, Val Cooper. Coming to you, hat in hand, was never my style. Now, let's go back real quick here. We're, look at the vulnerability of Pietro. <coughs> He's very much like Namor, very prideful and kind of, you know, uh, stiff-necked. But here, the way they draw him, showing the vulnerability. He goes, not long, perhaps a week at most. And she goes, okay, what's the gag? What's with the Mr. Nice attitude? I'm practicing the art of communication with as little condensation I can. It's a skill I might require, which again segues into his marriage with Crystal. But what Val does is when he says, forget it. My, you know, me coming to you hat in hand, I knew there was going to be some bullshit with you. But she goes, in fact, I think I can help you for this getaway. So Val does something really nice and really sweet for him. And she, and she goes, you know, it's important that you salvage, you know, what you can to try and fix your marriage. And then we get him and Crystal on their vacation. And I don't want to give away the ending because it's very poignant. It's, this was what I was talking about where it's just very emotional, very sweet story, a very calm moment. And I love how, I do want to touch you, this was funny. He's flying down the freeway and a cop clocks him at 198 and he goes, what the flipping, 189? That was either my imagination or equipment screw up. Or some collector zipping around still trying to find one of those Death of Superman comics. <laughs> now, if you've been around the block like I have, and you're, a, you know, kind of an old salt in comics, you remember how everyone was buying those up back in the day. That and the Return of Superman, what was it, Adventure Comics 500 or something like that. Anyway, people were buying those hand over fist thinking that they were going to be a collector. Now they're kind of a dollar bin. So that, that's, that was just a great little point, especially since this comic was, what, 93, 94? Just a lovely little joke there, and I couldn't help but laugh. So with that said, guys, X Factor 88, great comic book, awesome way to introduce random, and even with that, without that, Peter David, just his whole run on X Factor was fun. 
and I wish I would have got more when I was a kid, but now I'm just definitely going back and gobbling them up and just absolutely enjoying it. So if you liked what you've seen, please, first and foremost, support your local comic shop or wherever you like to pick up your books and grab a copy while you still can. And if you've enjoyed this review, we really would appreciate if you take a moment to like, share, and subscribe. Helps the club channel more than you could possibly know. And if you won't mind hitting that fancy little random bell next to subscribe, that way we can continue to upload content you guys get notified. Come to the channel, and we love talking with you on hearing your thoughts and feedback down in the comments below or our social media pages, which I'll make sure to leave the links down in the description. So with all that said, thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you all continue to have an absolutely amazing day reading. And happy hunting, true believers.